In this video, we're gonna show you two different ways to connect an external microphone preamp into your audio mixer. There's a bunch of different reasons that you might wanna do this. Maybe you need more gain than your audio mixer has to offer. Maybe you just like the sound of your preamp better. Or maybe this is the first step to you building more analog audio gear into your home studio, like compressors and EQ units. But of course, you're gonna start with a microphone preamp before you get to any of those. In this video, we're gonna cover a little bit of theory to make sure that you understand exactly what we're doing when we're connecting these two together. And we're gonna give you two tips to avoid because you can actually damage your equipment if you do this in the wrong way. Now, of course, you're gonna see all different types of equipment in this video. For the purposes of this video right now, you're listening to the Neat King B2. It's an awesome condenser microphone, I like using it. And then we're gonna connect the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone into our microphone preamp. The reason we picked this microphone is because it is normally pretty hard to power. And that is one reason that people use an external microphone preamp to provide more clean gain to power a hard to power microphone like the Shure SM7B. For the preamp today, we're using the Golden Age Project Pre-73 Mark IV. This is an awesome little compact, affordable microphone preamp if you're wanting to start building out your gear. And for the purposes of this video today, we're using the Mackie Pro FX 10V3 audio mixer. There's a couple of reasons I chose this and we're gonna get into it when it comes to features and specs and showing you everything there is to know about connecting an external microphone preamp into your audio mixer. Now, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below where you can find everything that you see here from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Okay, so let's cover a little bit of theory here before we get into the connection, just to make sure that we're all squared away and we know exactly what we're doing. The first thing is the difference between an unbalanced and a balanced connection. We always recommend using a balanced connection between your microphone preamp and your audio mixer. Now, if you use an unbalanced connection for this, it will still work, but you're just likely to get static, noise, interference. Sometimes you can even pick up a radio station. It's just not the highest quality option. So for an extra couple bucks, you can usually get a balanced cable that will save you a lot of headaches. Let's take a look at two quarter inch jacks here. The first one is a balanced quarter inch jack, also known as a TRS cable. It has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. It has three different sections here. You can see the two black lines that break up the three different sections. This is a balanced quarter inch jack, and this is the preferred jack to use. Beside it, we have an unbalanced quarter inch TS jack. It has a tip and a sleeve with just one black ring on it. Again, this is unbalanced. If you do have problems using a tip sleeve cable or jack like that, then I would recommend upgrading to a balanced solution. Now the next piece of theory that we need to quickly cover is the difference between a line level signal and a microphone level signal. If we think about a microphone capturing acoustic energy coming through the air, this will generate a tiny, tiny electrical signal. This isn't appropriate for mixing or anything like that. We need to pre-amplify that. That's why we have a preamp to get that to a line level signal so we can EQ it, process it, compress it, and work with it throughout the rest of our audio chain throughout whatever project we're working on. So I'm gonna show you on the audio mixer here. Let's take a look at these XLR jacks. These XLR inputs on it, if you see an XLR input on an audio mixer, typically it's always expecting a microphone level signal. You can see here it says the microphone preamp. Below it, we see line in four. So that's expecting a line input. Beside that, we see these combi jack inputs. It's still the same rules. They're just combined into a single jack. You can see right above written on the audio mixer here, it says mic slash line. That means that the XLR input from this combination jack is expecting a mic level signal and the quarter inch input on this combination jack is expecting a line level signal. So when we come into our microphone preamp, the microphone preamp will be expecting a microphone level signal coming from this microphone. This microphone preamp, this external preamp here, will be outputting a line level signal. So when we connect these two, we need to make sure that we're going line level output of the microphone preamp and do a proper line level input on the audio mixer. Let's also quickly brush up on the two ways that you can damage your equipment here. If you take your line level output of your microphone preamp into one of the XLR microphone level inputs on your audio mixer, it is possible in a rare circumstance that that extra voltage, that super strong signal coming from the microphone preamp 
can damage your preamps on your audio mixer. Another thing to consider is if you go into the XLR inputs on your audio mixer, and if you happen to have phantom power turned on, then you can actually send phantom power back to your microphone preamp and fry some things. If you're connecting to a line level input, like a quarter inch input on your audio mixer, those are completely detached from the 48 volts of phantom power that's in the audio mixer, and there's no chance that that 48 volts of phantom power will go back and hurt your microphone preamp. So again, just to reiterate, we are gonna be using quarter inch cables as we come into this audio mixer. Okay, let's get to the fun part. Let's actually connect everything the way it's supposed to go. So for the purposes of this video, the microphone preamp is already powered up and turned on, and the audio mixer is already powered up, turned on, and connected to my computer so we can hear it when it's all connected. I have this purple XLR cable that's coming from the Shure SM7B running down the boom arm, so let's connect this to our microphone preamp. Connect that to the back of the preamp. Next, to connect our microphone preamp to our audio mixer, we're gonna be using a balanced quarter inch TRS cable. As discussed before, this is a balanced solution. It's a high quality solution that's gonna work for you to get your signal from one unit to the other here. Let's connect this to the back of the microphone preamp. So we connected that to the quarter inch TRS output on the microphone preamp. Next, let's come to our audio mixer here. Let's make sure everything's muted. Let's plug that into the quarter inch line level of the first channel. You could easily plug this into the line level input three or four or one of the stereo pairs as well if you want. It's best to use one of the mono inputs. And for this video, we're just going to plug it into the quarter inch input on this combination jack. Okay, I'm going to flip around my microphone preamp here. Make sure everything's reset. So the first step here is we're going to turn up the gain on our microphone preamp. I did this before already, so I already know that it takes about 65 dB to wake up the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone. You can see that there are indicator lights on the front of the microphone preamp. That means that it is working. It's getting signal from the microphone. I'm going to turn the output all the way up. You do have a whole bunch of different options on a microphone preamp like this. You can put a high pass filter, which reduces the lower frequencies. You can put on the air filter, which will increase the upper frequencies. There'll typically be some type of output pad on it, and you'll get an output volume knob as well. There is a phase inverter on the other end of this microphone preamp as well. That can be a helpful tool in the studio. We have different videos that cover that subject. Now, a couple of things with the gain setup here. You can drive the microphone preamp a little bit harder and reduce the output if you want. That will give you more color and saturation in the sound. But for the purposes of this video today, we're going to keep it simple. Just go 65 dB on the microphone preamp and then keep the output turned all the way up. Next, let's come over to our audio mixer here. We need to quickly set this up. Just We're going to unmute the first channel here. We're going to make sure that the first channel's volume knob or fader is set to zero or unity and the main output on the audio mixer is up, so that signal comes all the way through. Now, you can see already when I'm talking, it's registering at about minus 30. There's a couple different reasons that it's coming in so slow. The Mackie mixer here is a little bit unique, where the gain knob goes from minus 20 to plus 40. So we want to turn this gain knob so it's around zero. So for this, it's like two-thirds. If you set this right, you should be seeing the same number on this meter as you're seeing on the meter of your microphone preamp. You don't need to work your preamp on some other audio mixers. Turning it all the way down will be zero, but for the Mackie to get your preamp to zero, you just need to turn it to about a third or so. So now you can hear the Shure SM7B for the first time, and this is one way that you can connect your external microphone preamp into your audio mixer. The key points here are that you shouldn't have to work your preamp on your audio mixer too much. The Mackie is a unique audio mixer where turning it up a third means that you're actually at zero instead of turning it down. But for most other audio mixers, you should be able to leave your preamp turned all the way down because you are getting a clean line level input into this audio mixer. Let's show you the second way that you can connect this. Now the previous solution does work well, but what happens if your microphone preamp only has an XLR output on the back of the preamp? We don't want to use an XLR cable to go from your microphone preamp into your audio mixer because as we described before, you'd be sending a line level output into a microphone level input. But you can get a cable like this that's still balanced 
There's a female XLR jack and it converts it to be a quarter inch TRS jack. So this is a balanced cable. It will just take your XLR output from your microphone preamp at a line level and deliver that to a quarter inch line level input on your audio mixer. Let's connect this now. So we connected the XLR cable to the output of the microphone preamp. Next, we're gonna use the same jack on our audio mixer here, the same combination jack, and connect that. I'm gonna turn this microphone preamp around so everybody can see. I have the exact same settings set on the microphone preamp as, this, as the previous sample. It has 65 dB of gain, no extra like high pass filter or air frequencies, and the output is turned all the way up. I'm gonna unmute the audio mixer here bring the microphone close. And now you can see that the meter is where it was before and you can hear the Shure SM7B exactly like you did in the previous sample. So this is option number two. Now in terms of quality between both options, it's exactly the same. I mostly showed you both different options because some microphone preamps only have XLR outputs, some only have quarter inch outputs, and some like this have both options for you. It doesn't really matter, but the key talking points here, are you wanna take the line level output of your microphone preamp, convert it to a quarter inch TRS jack to bring it into a line level input onto your audio mixer. I hope this video has been helpful. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you've seen in this video, we have links down in the description below. If you have any questions or comments on things that you've seen in this video, please leave a comment down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.